Hey there, I'm Charlotte with Colorful Teaching for You, and today we are going to be looking at how to teach gratitude to our children. Now, gratitude is so important because it enables our children and ourselves to feel empowered. It allows us to live in the moment instead of in the past. Now, if you want another way to feel empowered, then on well, on December, thir no, November 30th, I am hosting a free masterclass to help you if you're a parent or a teacher or um, a homeschooling parent, really, to um, feel empowered, to move away from feeling stressed out and overwhelmed and to feel like you have control because we're going to uh, create a plan that you love. All right, so the link is going to be associated with this video. It's called Systematized Plan to Super Passionate. Now, um, this past, well, actually in my past, I, you know if you've watched any of my videos, I have had a rocky past. And instead of sitting and dwelling on the past every moment of my life, I've learned to come to terms with what's, with what's happened and I've learned to accept it because it's made me who I am today. And the way I've done this is by practicing the concept of gratitude. Now, let me just let you know that um, gratitude, if you live in, in a space of um, anger, of frustration, overwhelm, like I, you don't have enough, like something's missing in your life, this enables you to feel abundance. It allows you to see that there is so much more to your life than what you realize in that moment. So one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was when I was younger, well, not that much younger, actually about 21 months ago, I gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby boy. And um, I was so excited before he was born to have him. I used to dance with him, we used to sing together. Well, while he was in my belly, we danced so much so that I even injured my hip during that time. But the wonderful part about all of that was um, I fell in love with him while he was in my room. And when he came out though, I was crying and I don't cry in, in public. So for me to be able to do that, people knew something was off about me. And instead of um, saying, oh no, um, something's wrong with Charlotte, she'll get over it. My family and friends came around and supported me. And not just me, but my son, which really allowed me to take a step back. He, I was in his life all the time. He didn't notice anything was wrong, but mentally I could step back for a moment and just care for myself recover and be fully present for him and instead of sitting and looking at at it as oh i failed as a mother i realized that my son had these beautiful people in his life and for that i am super grateful and so this is what i mean by practicing gratitude moves you from feeling like something's missing in your life like something that like there's a lack of like you are not enough to seeing that you are abundantly beautiful and so um, with that I'd love to get right into the four strategies that's going to help you not just teach your children gratitude but also hopefully practice it in your life so my first step for you is practice with games because let's face it games no matter what age even if you've got high school children will engage your children Okay, so the first one that I like to do, it's, these are really quick games with um, very little prep on your part, if any, and um, super fast. So here's one that I like. It's called, or I call it the breaking news, or breaking news. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is pair your kids up into small groups, and this can totally be done at home as well, where you, if Thanksgiving, if you're in the States, is coming up and you're having a family event, you can pair your family members into groups, and then you can um, have them either, well, you could either buy some inexpensive microphones or just have them create it with like props and then have them sit in groups and just talk about what they are grateful for. Then you'll have one anchor person and that person's gonna get it up and share it with the rest of the class or family about what they're grateful for. And it's gonna spark conversation. It's gonna have people um, saying oh yeah i'm grateful for that too you know so that's what we want to have so this is a great way to start that dialogue the next one is what i call the thankful tree so now christmas is coming up if you're going to have a christmas tree well what you could do is you could put your ornaments up you could put your lights up but instead of putting 
um, the sparkly silver garlands, you can put a little bit out, but I would create a garland and have your kids write on this garland all of the things that they are thankful for. And I can tell you, if you get them started on just a little bit, your kids are going to want to add more and more to that garland until it's completely full. And that's just getting really not only into the excitement of it, but it starts to fill them with that joy. It really isn't that what Christmas is about. Being grateful for what we have instead of always asking for more. So this is another wonderful format. So here we've got two games. So number one is practice with games. Number two is reflect on it. And here I've got some very quick and easy reflection guides for you. It's just print and go. And there's multiple, so you could choose one, one per day or however you want to work on it. And I would love for you to teach it to your children and have them work on it because when they're actually in this mode of reflection, they are thinking about all of the things that they are grateful for. At first, they'll start with really, really small things and then it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and they start to add to this. So they get to see the abundance in their life. Now, the third step is going to be there for you and this I call model it because children don't really learn from people who just preach at them. You've got to preach, but you've also got to practice. Practice what you preach, right? You've heard that saying. <laughs> and so what I want you to do is practice um, or model it for them. So I've got different levels for different students and different age groups, different, or even just uh, if you want to differentiate it. But what you can do is print out any of them and model it for them. I would put it on a whiteboard and I would actually write it out for them or show them this is what I'm grateful for. Use one of the prompts and actually teach it to them. And when they see you doing it, and you, but be authentic when you do it, be real. So if you are grateful for, I don't know, the apple that you have, write about it. If you are grateful for the, um, all, oh goodness, all the marking you had to do last night, sure. Because maybe you got to learn about one of your students. Maybe they wrote a little note to you. So. If that's something you're grateful for, talk about that. So really practice it and do it alongside them. It's not just going to help them, but it'll help you too, because you get to see the abundance in your life as well. Now, the fourth step is to perform acts of kindness. I love taking when I'm, when I'm teaching my kids outside of the classroom, because whatever we teach them within the confines of our class or if you're a homeschooling parent within the confines of your home needs to be um, you need to show them how they can continue this learning outside and make an impact on the world because that's what they are going to be doing right so the way i like to do this is either fundraise or um, help them um, help them raise awareness for a particular foundation Right? Last week we talked about writing cards for veterans because that, that helps them. That's a different way of showing kindness. So teach them to show ki acts of kindness outside of your home or your classroom. And what this is going to do is it's going to help them see, hey, I thank you so much for all of the gifts that's in my life. And now I want to support somebody else. I want them to see the good in their life. And I want them to learn about the good in their life by by learning from me. And so you're teaching your children to continue this gratitude. And when they put positivity into the world, guess what's going to happen to them? More positivity is going to come back to them. And when you're helping them, you're also doing the same thing simultaneously. And that's what's going to happen to you too. So let's invite some gratitude in our, in our lives. Let's be grateful for what we have. So um, I'd like you to take a moment really quickly with me right now, before we even continue is Tell me, what are you grateful for? Think about that in your mind. So I'm grateful for my family in this moment. I'm grateful for the fact that I had a professional development day today and we learned about our um, indigenous um, our indigenous people of Canada. And we, while we talked about their suffering, we also looked at how we can bring reconciliation, truth and reconciliation into our classrooms so that we can start the healing process with our kids who I know are going to make a massive difference in the future right they are the ones it might might happen in my time but it's more than likely going to happen with them so i'm grateful for this ability to learn with my with my um, teachers and be part of this change so 
those are my two big things in this very moment. I'm sure there's a lot more that I'm going to be writing about in my gratitude journal later on, but this is what I wanted to talk about right now. So let's really recap right now. We looked at number one, the importance of gratitude in our lives. Number two, four different ways that we can teach it to our kids and hopefully practice it is number one, practice with games. Number two is to um, reflect on it. Number three is to model it. And number four is to um, perform acts of kindness. So it goes out into the world. Okay. Now, I hope that you practice one or all of these strategies. You won't be able to do it all right away, but you can do it over time. In the comments below, or if you'd like to private message me, I'd love to know which of these comments you plan to use in your classroom or at home. And in the meantime, remember on November 30th, we are going to have our systems, um, our systems masterclass. It's free and the link is gonna be associated with this video. I so hope I see you there and I cannot wait to meet you. But in the meantime, remember, next week we are going to be coming back again and we're going to be building on the concept of reflection where we're going to be looking at self-reflection and self-assessment in report cards because that's coming up soon isn't it <laughs> i just started writing mine and so um i would love to see you soon and in the meantime remember to create experience and teach from the heart take care my friends and i will see you same place same time next week take care bye bye